All right, uh, I want to welcome everyone to our next candidate one-on-one uh, -on -one interview sponsored by Priority Real Estate Group. Uh, I'm Corey King, Executive Director of the Southern Mid Coast Maine Chamber. Um, and, I, and our next uh, guest is Holly Cobb, a Senate District Candidate from District 23. If you haven't been part of this series before, if you haven't watched any of our other interviews, um, this is purely information based. We just want to let the candidates have a chance to tell you kind of who they are, where they've come from, and what they believe in. Uh, though the chamber um, does does support some policy stances, we do not take policy endorsements. I got candidate. We do not do candidate endorsements. Excuse me. Um, so uh, we have no horse in the race. We just want to show you who the great candidates are uh, for the future of our area. Also, Priority Real Estate Group is helping us um, by sponsoring this series. They also are not endorsing any. With that being said, let's get right into it with, with Holly Cobb. Hello, Holly, how are you? I am well, thank you for the opportunity to uh, speak with you today, Corey, and introduce myself to your members. Oh my gosh, Holly, thank you so much for, for, for being with us. So um, just three questions we're gonna go through. Um, first of all, uh, is, is, is your bio, your personal background, where, where are you from? What have you been involved in in the area? Um, kind of why do you want to run and take that any direction you want? Great, thank you. So I'm a lifelong Mainer. I grew up in Bucksport, Maine. Uh, my husband and I moved to Topsom, Maine about uh, a little over 20 years ago. Um, my, my background is uh, primarily in education. I have a master's in school psychology from the University of Southern Maine. Uh, I initially in my career worked providing special education services to students with special needs. And then I transitioned to working at USM for the Center for Educational Policy Applied Research and Evaluation. And then when my husband and I started having a family, I really began transitioning a little bit away from working and being at home with our children. And that is really the gateway to what got me more involved in my community. And I began volunteering. Uh, when my kids were school aged, I was able to um, work in our schools and volunteer regularly. And uh, that also then led me to um, being uh, an elected official and serving as a school board member for the last 10 years at MS 8075. Wow. That's, that's awesome. So just to clarify, I see you're running for Senate District 23, which is Saginaw and Dresden. It is, is Saginaw right? County and, and Dresden. Okay, great, yep. great. Wow, and on a school board, that's interesting. It, um, is, it is interesting, particularly right now where our, our focus, I think everybody's focus, whether you're um, an administrator, a school board member, a teacher, a parent, a student, has all been about um, reopening our schools safely. Yeah, well, it's reopening the school and it's it's having that new beautiful high school as well. Um, yes, it is. I can, I, I, that is a fabulous community project that we're so proud of. Um, I've, I've been pleased to serve on two of the subcommittees of the building committee for the high school and I am currently a member of the building committee. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're hopeful to have our community come in and uh, safely be able to see this, this beautiful building um, in the coming months. So, and uh, also the great news is it will be a polling site for the town of Topsom. Oh, wonderful. Okay, I didn't know that, that's great. I mean, you know, I love it too, I mean, selfishly from a chamber, when people are looking to relocate, they, they ask about taxes, they ask about healthcare, they ask about schools, you know? And, and so every time, you know, we have a project like this in our region, it's, it's just a nice positive, it's another thing that, that we can add to our, to our helpful checklist to, to, to drive people here. So why are you running for office? What are, what are two or three kind of key issues that, that, that you believe in um, and that really need our focus? In, in the yeah, absolutely. I, I, this might sound corny, but at the end of the day, I really enjoy serving my community and I'm yeah. committed to continue to work on behalf of my community. Uh, and I've, I've always thought that I might want to do that at the state level. And Right now, I feel more than ever, I want to work towards more balance in our state government. Um, I'm concerned that the legislature hasn't um, been in session and that the voices of Mainers are not necessarily being represented by their elected officials. Um, and, you know, we're in challenging times where I think it takes all of us to contribute to the solutions to these complex issues and having more people and more voices at the table um, should be a benefit, um, not, uh, not 
not a, a barrier to um, moving forward in our in our state. Um, my platform is very simple. I, I want to um, see economic recovery in our state and I support our small business community. One of the first things I felt I could do during COVID was go out to all the towns in my district and start promoting the different businesses that were open or how they were opening. Um, our business leaders have been extremely adaptable and creative and have really risen to the challenge of being able to provide goods and services to the people of Maine in a safe manner. And there are other excellent independent thinking business owners that said, you know, due to X, Y, Z reasons or, to the, in, or with my employees, we've decided that we're not going to be re reopening under these types of um, restrictions. So, uh, you know, that's one thing I, I will continue to do is support our small business community in Maine. Um, I also feel passionate about career and technical education. Um, oh, yeah. In a time right now where we have a skilled labor shortage and um, are in need of economic growth, um, I, I would like to see us decrease the barriers for our youngsters to um, obtain um, credentials in career and technical education. Uh, unfortunately, funding has, was cut in the uh, last, in the governor's initial budget career and technical education and you know that that's a challenge um, a lot of our communities share uh, career and technical schools and therefore when you have three or at least sending schools um, going to one book um, school you know schedules transportation that all becomes challenging you know we have our students that are needing to go to different schools to get academic um, requirements versus, um, you know, their credentials through STEM programs. So that's another area that um, is important to me and I would like to advocate for. You know, I, I, I got to say, you know, I've got kudos on both of those. One, all the changes and the adaptations that businesses have been making. Um, I, I've gone down to the, the Thompson Fairground Cafe and, and seen how they've changed the way that they do business the way Cricker is doing business. I mean, there's so many businesses that have adapted what they're doing and really deserve huge credit for, for all the changes that they've made. Um, but I've also heard, you know, of the businesses that said, we just, we can't make it under these circumstances. We're going to have to shut it down for now. Um, or those that struggle to find the PPP options that, you know, the, the, the chamber is working with them on. And the other thing is the career and technical. That's a, that's a huge piece uh, chamber-wise that, that we've been looking at too, because we had a plumber and electrician and an AC um, HVAC um, shortage prior to uh, um, COVID-19, and we're going to have it after COVID-19. And, and we've got to get these kids the skills. We actually have some some chamber workforce programming that we're going to be looking at. We were going to launch it this year, and then and then COVID happened, and, and it's still in our plans. To, to it and those are the types of programs that we need. We need to absolutely be supporting and and encouraging. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I can't stress it enough. And, and I really think that we should be able to introduce these types of careers as opportunities to our students as young as middle school. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no reason why eighth graders aren't able to, you know, see a pathway um, that where they get their academic requirements, but they also know that they could graduate high school and start working in an apprenticeship program and, um, you know, moving forward um, with their career. I love that. I love that. Holly, we got about two minutes left. Okay. Um, so I want to keep this around 10 minutes. So any okay. other challenges that you think we're going to be facing? Anything that, that you're, you know, excited to, to, to tackle once you get in there? Any, anything else that, that really comes You up? know, I, I, I really, you know, obviously we're going to have to deal with budget that, you know, there's a, a huge yeah. budget shortfall, you know, that's, but that to me really comes back to, supporting our business growth, um, providing opportunities for uh, people to get into the workforce and, um, you know, have controlled spending. It's not about increasing taxes. I don't think that's the way to economic growth. Um, and, you know, I really want to focus on some of the industries that have perhaps fallen through the cracks. I know, you know, just reaching out to, for example, a, a perfect example are, are wedding planners, right? So they... Oh, yeah. They're not, um, you know, they're not a restaurant. They're, they're, 
there they don't have any guidelines for how to open up right but yet they've kind of fallen through the cracks of so what can what do i need to do so i can run my business safely yeah. and um you know when you have industries that don't necessarily have a strong voice or there's not an organization a professional organization that helps support them you know how how do these people stay in business um yeah. because if they made it through this summer um that's fabulous but i'm worried about what's coming in 2021 and what are the things that we need to start doing now so that um, we can make sure that those sorts of businesses can reopen safely and conduct business in a new way if they if they need to and that's great that's a great point spot to leave it. but yeah the effects of all of this we're going to be feeling it for for years to come and and wedding venues uh, entertainment arts you know theaters i mean all, all of those places really need a, a um, you know a, a sustained focus as well well holly that's great um we are going to be doing a forum in october with, with you and some of the other candidates at the race between now and then though, if somebody wanted to, to find out more about you, um, where can they go? How can they do that? So I'm on Facebook, COP for Senate. I have a website, Holly COP for Maine Senate. You can give me a call, 207-751-2847. Uh, I'll be out in the community um, every day until election day, trying to connect with folks. And, and you know, really my bottom line belief is that my job as an elected official is to connect with constituents and represent your voice. And so that's what I'll be out there working to do. Holly, that sounds great. And that's Holly Kopp, K-O-P-P, -P, is how you spell the last name, uh, if you're looking up Holly. And, and thank you so much for joining us. Thanks um, for the opportunity, Corey. Have a great right. day. Thank you so much. And thank you to Priority Real Estate Group again for sponsoring this series. And please stay tuned on our YouTube channel and look for more candidate um, interviews as we do more one-on-ones uh, throughout September. Thank you so much.